So we're going to go ahead and get started so we can kind of move through some of this. So some of the topics that we're going to be covering today is uh, maximizing and improving the battery life of your computer. Um, maximizing space because I don't know about you, but I run out of space on my computer if I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of um, pictures and um, lots of documents. I've had a computer run out of space and, and not sure what to do about it. So we're going to be talking about that. And then becoming aware of malware and um, how to protect your computer from not only people, but from um, websites that actually can damage your um, computer and knowing what to look for. So. So when we're maximizing space, um, hard drives are holding more and more data, and but they're also becoming cheaper. And so we're quickly filling up those drives with even more data. And because we're increasing our consumption of data, it's important to be able to maximize the space that we have. And computers can translate that everything that we input into a binary language. And that's how we communicate with um, computers. And so you can see that data is measured by a byte, a kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, petabyte. And um, I don't know if y'all have a external drive, but I do and I've got one that, um, I think it's 128 terabytes, which is a lot of space. But you'd be surprised how quickly you can fill that up if you're not um, doing housekeeping. You get a lot of duplication of files every time you back something up or you transfer, you get in a hurry and you just chunk and dump from one place to another so that you can free up space on your computer. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But um, the binary code requires storage space. And the smallest is that byte. So it starts with the byte and um, the kilobyte. And approximately 1,000 bytes, so everything is multiplied. So every time you go from a byte to a kilobyte, you're multiplying by a thousand. So it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so most hard drives are generally measured uh, in terabytes, while most jump drives and pen drives are measured in gigabytes. Um, although now I have found some terabytes, they're small terabytes, but they're, they're moving up to the terabyte um, jump drives that you can use. So, I'd like to do an exercise right now. And this might be kind of a little fun, maybe a little challenging, but I'd like everybody to write their name in the binary code and then put it in your chat box. So,
I think I have the shortest name. <laughs> Ruth, all of the microphones are off. Just wanted to let you know that. So no, we can't hear you, but if you will type, um, you can put in your question and we will make sure that we answer any questions that you have. So now you know how computers talk. So now we're going to try and maximize the space. Um, there's several different tools that you can use to um, help with managing your, your space. So disk cleanup, those are uh, programs that are actually on your computer and you can use those. We're going to go through each one of those. Uh, disk cleanup, does everybody know where the recycle bin is? It's usually already on the, your front desktop of your computer. And um, if you delete something, if you're not an email, it will go to the recycle bin. And you can go, you need to go and check that pretty regularly and empty it because that frees up space. Especially if you're deleting large files, if you don't delete it from the recycle bin, it doesn't really delete it. Um, using external drives can also free up your hard drive. So if your hard drive on your computer gets full, if you want to speed things up without having to go through and delete everything, you can actually hook up an external drive and just chunk it and put it over into the external drive to deal with later. Um, there's also cloud storage. Some, um, if you have some, you know, if you are through your work, you may have access to cloud storage. Um, sometimes you can purchase cloud storage and some programs have um, a small amount of cloud storage that you can use um, when you purchase and set up that, that um, either your computer or a specific program. And then the disk defragmenter. What happens with your computer, it's not always just about maximizing space, it's also about improving the speed of your computer. And disk, frag, disk fragmenter, what it does is it takes all those um, bits and pieces the way a computer stores things, it can actually break up a document into those smaller binary bits and, and save them in the nooks and crannies of your computer hard uh, drive. And so what you want to do is so that your computer isn't have to, having to go to different addresses in your computer, you want to consolidate the, um, the single file into a a certain place and that's what the disk uh, defragmenter does. It pulls all those bits and pieces and it chunks them together so that when you click on that document or click on that file, it opens it up much quicker because it's all right there together. It doesn't have to go searching for the different pieces. We've already done that. So um, some things that we the power options that you can set up on your computer, um, that helps to lengthen your battery power. Um, there's airplane mode, if uh, even on your uh, cell phones and stuff, because this is a computer. It's a computer, we don't think of it as a computer, but it is. You can put things on airplane mode on a desktop computer, you can turn off uh, Wi-Fi, you can turn off, um, you can unplug from the internet. 
There are other ways, if you're not using an, a feature, if you turn it off, it actually ends up saving your battery power. But if you do that, you gotta remember that you have to turn it back on when you want to use that service in the computer. Um, defragmenting, again, helps with battery power. The um, replacing the battery, uh, if the thing about um, battery power is that when you plug it in, it charges the battery. But if you leave it plugged in for too long, it doesn't allow the computer to utilize the battery. And you do have to kind of make sure that um, you allow the battery to operate occasionally so that it can then be recharged. Um, turning off your Bluetooth helps with um, saving your battery power. So, Becoming aware of the malware, and I don't know how many of you actually back up your computer, back up your files, but that's probably something that you need to do depending on how much you use for your computer and how uh, many files you have, you may want to back up once a week if you're doing a lot of different documents. If you don't do that much, maybe once a month is okay. I wouldn't recommend going a whole year without backing up your computer um, because if you lose electricity, it, the power and the, the battery goes dead, you, you can lose virtually everything and you have to start all over again. The other ways that you can protect your um, computer is to use antivirus software. Um, there's a lot of different uh, antivirus softwares. A lot of computers come with software already loaded on it, but you need to make sure that if you've got it, you've got something activate, activated. If you don't like what's on there when you get the computer, you ha also have to learn how to turn that off so that you can put something else on. Uh, don't use external uh, storage from unknown locations. A lot of times that's how viruses get transferred. So making sure that you're getting, uh, if you're using jump drives, that you know who they're coming from. And you know that they keep their computer clean too. When you're online in the internet, don't click on those sketchy ads. Those ads, sometimes if you accidentally click somewhere on the page, you all of a sudden see a pop-up. And those can uh, sometimes automatically download to your computer. And that's one of the reasons that you do need to have a good antivirus because it will detect those um, those ads that are running in the background and help to isolate them and get them off of your computer. Always use common sense when you're browsing. If you get somewhere that doesn't feel comfortable, it doesn't look right, close out, get out of it so that, um, and the faster you do that, the better off you are. Um, as you can see, my mouse is moving all around my page. Um, when you're doing that, be sure that you're not accidentally clicking. Because when you click, it moved. So say no to clickbait. So you have things that pop up and, and if you scroll over it and you happen to click on it, it's gonna pop up at you. So there's the hot singles, you'll never guess, weird tricks, shocking weight loss, you won't believe, leave you speechless, and political ads. You have all of those kind of things that are coming at you and we have that all the time. If you're on social media, if you're on the internet looking up something on Google, it's all ad driven. And so you need to be very careful what you click on. Just because you click on it, 
doesn't mean that it is a safe site. So, um, don't be the one. What's your wacky Dr. Seuss address? Never, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> Put your credit card into something that you didn't initiate. So if you clicked on something and they, they want you to put in information that uh, you didn't go there personally, it just popped up. You never put anything in there. Don't put your social security number. You don't put credit card numbers. You certainly don't put everything on your credit card information into something that you don't know about. If you're buying something online, you're going to make sure that whoever you're buying it from, they have a secure site and that their stuff is encrypted before you start putting in all that information. Because that's how you get hacked. That's how you get unnecessary charges to your credit card. And you just need to be a whole lot safer about it. Oh. So that's the end of the, the presentation itself. I'd kind of like to um, take you through some places. So I'm going to share my... Um, Let me get to what I want to show you. Okay. Okay, can y'all see my screen right here? Yes. We sure okay. can. We can see your screen. All right. So if you have your screen open, whether you've got Apple or um, a Microsoft uh, Windows program, somewhere you're going to have your settings, and you need to be able to be able to find your settings. Some of the things that you want to be able to do, a lot of times you can just start typing. So if I wanted to do um, defrag, all I have to do is start typing it and it brings it up. And so this is a defragmenter and I can tell it um, what drive to defrag. And this is a really good tool that you can use. Um, it does speed up your computer. Sometimes if you haven't done a defragmentation in a while, um, you need to do it on kind of a pretty regular basis in order to keep it, your computer working well. The other thing that I wanted to show you is over, it looks like I have lots of stuff on here, but right here is my recycle bin. Okay, and so you can tell what I've got in my recycle bin. And I'm going to say no, I put those there. I know what they are, but a lot of times your recycle bin is really full and you need to make sure that you empty it. Okay. So the other thing is, is down here on your bottom, um, this is really kind of a tutorial for Windows because I'm not on an Apple machine, but you do have where um, you can see that right here, it has Windows security actions needed, but that's not my um, virus protection. And so my virus protection is not showing up right here, but if I type in
Mississippi State, this is my work computer. And so uh, Mississippi State is using Cisco AMP for endpoints. That is their virus protection. And so I have things that I can do and set up. I can have it scanned now so that it will go through and check for um, viruses. It will check for cookies. It'll tell you how many cookies you have and, and how to empty that. The thing that you want to make sure is that you should do a scan kind of regularly. I would say um, at least depending on how much time you're online and what you're doing, you want to do a uh, scan pretty regularly. A lot of times you can set it up on a schedule so that you can schedule. And if I go into settings, it will allow you to schedule your um, scan. So you can schedule those. And if you don't want to have to physically go in every time and do that, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are um, going in and having it scheduled so that it goes off when you're not typically using your computer, but your computer is on and it will do it on in the background so that you don't even know it's going on. It's always good to make sure that you've got your virus scanning. How many of you know how to um, use, let's say you have um, found a document and you want to download it from the web. Do you know how to um, get your virus protection to scan it before you download it? Or a lot of times you can do it if you've downloaded something. Um, go to my downloads so that I can show you. Yesterday I was um, looking for some resources and I wanted to make sure that um, I had downloaded this and before I opened it because it was a zipped file I wanted to make sure that it was safe for me to download or to open. And so you can right click on any file on your computer and have it checked. So right here is my virus protection thing. I can click scan and it's scanning that file right there and it's going to tell me whether or not it's okay or not. It may not be doing it because I already did it yesterday. Because <laughs> I extracted it, okay. But anyway, that's how you would do, you would, you would click on the file sure why it's not working but anyway that's how you do it does anybody have any questions so far Any questions in the question box? Yes. Uh, okay, so the question is, do we need to be doing this on our work computer? And I would say yes. If you, even if your company, um, has given you a computer, most of the time your company is expecting you to take care of that computer. Um, and so you need to be following as many of these uh, house cleaning procedures, even for a work computer, because otherwise 
you just keep working and working and then something happens and you have to send it out to your company for repair. And I've had to do that and you don't like to have to do that because being without a computer for a week while they get to it in and get it fixed and decontaminated it <laughs> takes some time. And so it's just like maintaining your car. If you're not checking the oil, if you're not filling it with gas, if you're not doing all those maintenance things, your computer is going to mess up just like a car would mess up. So you do need to do those regular checkups. Any other questions? In the question answer box, I'm pretty sure you talked about organization um, that Kathy wanted to know about and then improving your battery life um, and know what to look for with malware. You answered all those discussions that were put into the question. Okay, but when we talk about organization, are you talking about how you set up files? Let me unmute Kathy and okay. let Kathy answer that question. Kathy, I'm gonna put you on the spot and I'm gonna unmute you and allow you to talk. So Kathy, you can talk now. Kind of tell us what kind of organization that you're wanting to know about. It still has her muted. Um, Kathy, I think that you have to. There I've got it. Y'all can hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't like being muted all the time. <laughs> um, well, I guess organization from the standpoint of files and junk I don't need and how to find what I do need. I mean, I got more crap on my computer. <laughs> and okay. I can't, half the time I can't find what I'm looking for. So. Are you describing oh. wanting a better filing system of some sort or fold and want to know how to use folders? Well, okay, things like all these documents I save. They are, whether it be Master Gardener Minutes or recipes or whatever, and they're scattered everywhere how to create files. Um, how do I put that? I start, I tried it after one class before. I had like a folder for Bastard Gardener Minutes, but I never could, I can't remember to go put those things in those folders. And so when I go back to look for it, well, what did I call it this time, this month? And yeah, I spend a lot of time looking for stuff just simply because I don't name things properly and I don't move them into a folder. They're just sitting out there as documents and there's tons and tons of them. So stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. So I'm not the best at, at record keeping, but I'm going to show you kind of sort of how I organize my so typically when I, I click on this file folder down here, it, mm -hmm. it brings up how you can, it shows you how your computer is organized. Um, you can get really confused in this if you open everything. So this is for quick access. This shows the things that I use a lot or that I have recently opened and I tend not to like to use that too much because then I end up coming down here because I didn't see what I wanted right there and then I go this. Mm -hmm. And so I don't like, this is just a personal thing. I don't like doing the quick access. I don't like leaving these all open. If I'm working in quick access, I go to it from there but then I make sure that I've closed it when I get finished with it because otherwise I get confused as to where I am. I've got so many things open. 
Yeah. So this is just like having different drawers in your filing cabinet. Think of it like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's just different drawers. But even when you have different drawers, a lot of times you have duplication in drawers, don't you? I know I do. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> yes. I know I have a file of that, but I'm going to start a new file and it goes in another place. And so I like going to my PC. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have one that's desktop and it shows you what is right here on this desktop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. But I don't, I don't always use that much on my desktop. And so I like to go to my documents and you can see that how I've kind of, I have a lot of files. I have a 4-H file, but you can see that I've done things by years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I also have a 2020 year. And when you go in here, I've got certain things that I didn't know what to do with at the time. And so I have one where I started it for the year so that I can just kind of dump things in there. And at a later time, it's like having a to file folder. That's my to file folder. I can save it right there. And then occasionally when things slow down a bit, I will go in to this and then move things into their correct folders. So right now I've got farmer's market certificates and um, that really needed to go in another folder, but I didn't, I didn't want to lose it before I had an opportunity to put it in the correct folder. So I have a 2020 folder. I have a 2019 folder that doesn't have very much stuff in it because I occasionally go through and I refile things so that they go in the right place. Just to show you, Kathy, I do have a lot of stuff, but even my master gardener folder, I have it broken down by a lot of different things. I have a lot of historical things on it, mm -hmm. but I do it by year too, because there's major things that happened in years. So there's the 2010 right. directory. Um, every now and then, when you look at it, I have a lot of folder or a lot of files that haven't been filed away. And I really need to go back and then put them in their year, their year folder under the Master Gardener program where it goes. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can set things up, but I, I have major things that I do. I do have one where I've got Facebook images and you can see that I started those by year. So these are the images that I'm using this year for, um, Facebook stuff. And it just makes it easy for me to be able to, I know that I'm doing this and this is what I use this year so that I can go back and, and not repeat or sometimes pull it from other places. Yeah. Okay. So y'all know that it's hard to know what the pictures are in it. Yes. And when you're in here, there is a way that you can enlarge that. You can either, it's displayed right now with information about how large the the file is, so that's a really big file. But if I wanted to um, enlarge it so that I could at least see the pictures, these are the pictures. And they're big enough that I can see. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So the, there are a lot of different ways, but I typically have big categories and a lot of times after a while, um, I have gone through this year and I've deleted some things, mm -hmm. um, but it has to be set up so that it's recognizable to you. Right. The other thing is, is a lot of times, uh, especially with pictures and stuff, you'll download things and see like this one is unnamed. Most of the time, if you're downloading from somewhere else and it's just got numbers on it, I rename it so that I can quickly find what I'm looking for. A squash vine borer adult. That's what I wanted to show. And if I just had a number there, I would have had to keep going through. This means that I could actually go to the top and put in here squash 
Yeah. And it's going to pull up those things that had that in the, the title. So making sure that whatever you name it, it that it's not just a number. Mm -hmm. Because numbers, unless you're a numbers person, you're not going to, that's not got going to be what you search by. You're going to search by a word. So yeah. make whatever you're saving um, recognizable and easy to search for. Okay. Makes okay. sense. Um, a lot of times, if I don't know where I put stuff, I'll come right here on documents and I'll do squash. And you can see then it pulls up everything that I ever did about squash. Okay. Or anything that had the word squash in the document. You like squash, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, is that helpful? Yeah, yeah. I, do, you, do you already have things kind of set up like that? Well, I attempted to, but it was, it was not, I, I didn't maintain it. So, I still have so much that I need to, to do something with. Okay, so that's one of the things that I would say is that we all need to make sure that, you know, maybe once a month we schedule some time just to do computer housekeeping. I should you know, do that. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be a very long period of time. You know, set a time limit because it can get overwhelming. But if you plug away at it, now, you know what documents you still need to hang on to and what yeah. needs to go away. Uh, a lot of times I end up downloading a, a lot of stuff. And that's the other thing. When you're in downloads, so there is a folder that says download. Mm -hmm. When you've downloaded something, do you just leave it here or do you have a folder that it goes to after you download it? It stays right there. Okay. Well, one of the things that you can do in order to to do this is like this is the office bill. I have a folder on my desktop that is for like county budget stuff. Mm -hmm. I can take and and pull that over into the county budget stuff. I'm gonna put it in the 2020 because that's what it's for. And see, it removes it from that download. Right. Right. And it goes to the proper folder. And if you're not going to use that again, um, then you need to delete it. it. And it cleans yeah. it up. And so even if you just spent uh, 15, 20 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes once a week, mm -hmm. just going through and cleaning up your downloads or doing some basic cleaning, defrag, um, running your virus check or making sure that your virus check is, has run and is up to date and checking that. Um, those are just some really easy things that you can do to keep your computer working well. Yeah, and I, I do need to spend some time on it because it, it gets a little bit frustrating. And I know I have a lot of stuff on there that I don't need. Um, my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter had uh, done a lot of her school files on there and stuff where classes that she was taking on online. And I, I was like, do I need to keep this? Why do I care about all this blood stuff you've got downloaded here? <laughs> so I've, I've deleted stuff like that, that she nor I have any use for. It's just, um, it's just, going to take some time to get it cleaned up and then to make myself maintain it once I, once I get it done. You know, if you don't keep doing something, you may as well not have done it to begin with. Yeah. So I make, tr I make more work for myself just because I get in a hurry and I, or I have, I'm like, well, Joy, y'all both know going a million different directions. And so you don't follow through those last couple of little steps because they're not important at that moment. And then you end up with all this garbage that you have to go back and sort through, so. 
but I'll get it. Well, one of the things that I will tell you is that we will be sending you a follow-up email. Uh -huh. And there is a publication that will be attached to that as well as an evaluation form. And so be very honest with your feedback um, and let us know if there's other programs that you'd like to have done this way so that we can make sure that we have other things to offer. Oh yeah, I've done. I've actually done this one before. It's always good to review. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. So, Kathy, you're not a, you're not alone in that. I need to practice that too. So, um, just baby steps would be my recommendation. Is we need to <laughs> set a time, like Joy mentioned, set a t aside time to do some computer housekeeping, um, because we can't get it accomplished in one day. But just baby yeah. steps and trying to and start a system so that whenever we we don't get in that rut so that you know when we're in a rush that we have a system in place that's easy to use for us well yeah that's I'm it tempted to do it to throw it into my documents or my papers. <laughs> so i know that's easier said than done i'm guilty and i need to housekeep my too. majorly <laughs> i bet miss anderson over there is a little guilty of that occasionally too huh. She's more organized than I am, but <laughs> she can find stuff better than I can most days. If I could just, re if, if I would be consistent in what I do, uh, for example, this, um, what, February Master Gardener meeting, uh, minutes. I might call it DCMG minutes February. And the next time I might call it by something else, uh, the next month by something else. And so rather than just change the month as I go or put the month first, it's just real inconsistent. So I, I end up scrolling through pages and pages or doing a search and not finding it because I didn't search by it whatever I call that particular one. Honestly, that's why I like um, at least having a year folder mm -hmm. so that when I'm saving something and it's current, I put it in that 2020 folder. Um, and so I don't have to search my whole thing. Yeah. And so it, it, it breaks it down into the smaller chunks. And then that, like I said, then that's my two file folder um, and I go there and then um, probably it's about every two weeks I go there and I, I, I spread it back out to the um, folders that it really needs to be in so that I don't always have a lot to search through. A lot of times I do save things directly. If I'm doing something like doing pictures for a Facebook post, I find my photo, whether it's on my computer or out there on the web, and I save it to that file folder. So I don't have to search everywhere for it. I know it's going to be in that file folder, no matter what I name it. That's right. the only folder I have to search. Right. And that makes and that makes perfect sense to do it that way. Now, I'm afraid a, 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 a 2B file folder would just get me in trouble if I did not <laughs> have a, a scheduled time in my mind to go back through it and put it where it needs to go. Otherwise, that's just going to be like searching through all my documents looking for something. Cause no. Okay, so that. you've got um, your computer with, and you if you just have one big file folder and you keep saving it to the same file folder and you've got 20 years worth of stuff, to search through, yeah, that's going to be really tough. If you have it broken out into years and you're saving everything to that one year, you've at least reduced it yeah. by 19 years of stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, that, I mean, that's true. But if you don't go back and put it where you're going to want it in the end, you know, I would, I would say, okay, let's put it in 2020. And come December of 2020, it's going to be full and I ain't done nothing with it the whole year. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but then you've got an opportunity once you, I mean, it's like doing taxes. Once a year, 
You go through hey, and you put everything in that file folder in its right place. Yeah. I, I just have to find a, a system that will. And I showed you my system. It has to be a system that works for you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, I don't always do real good with some things, which kind of surprises me because I'm so picky about details and stuff. And yeah, it's bad, but I'll, I'll get it fixed. Because I'm getting too old to keep trying to remember all this stuff. Wow. Well, <coughs> anyway, if, there, if there's any other questions, I'd be happy to try and, uh, and attempt to answer them. Well, I don't have any more right now. You're muted, Laura. Hey, Ruth, do you have anything that you wanted to share? I know you had put some things in the question and answer box. Did you get your stuff answered that you wanted answered? You have to unmute yourself if you want to, um, if you want to speak, Ruth. But if you don't have um, a question, you can just stay muted. Well, if there's no other questions, um, unless you have something that you want me to particularly address, you can send it to me in chat box. We're going to send you an email with um, the evaluation form and also a link to the publication that goes with this presentation so that you can uh, read up. And it goes into a little bit more detail about um, different things. I appreciate everybody attending and um, helping Laura and I figure out how to do a, a webinar. This is our first together. Woohoo! <laughs> so um, we hope that you'll join us for the next webinar, which is when is that, Laura? Join us back on Thursday, on the 21st, this Thursday. Not tomorrow, but the next day, um, Thursday on the 21st at 10 o'clock for Technology After You Die. And so we're going to explore the different um, types of technology that you use in your social media accounts and talk about passwords and how to make sure that um, once you pass away, um, that your family has the right tools and information they need in order to make sure that they can deactivate or memorialize your accounts um, with the social media that you use. It'd be interesting. Join us back. Okay. Thank you all again for attending. <laughs>